I thought we'd talk today about threads in highs. All code that you write in your scripts runs on one of two threads. It can either be running on the audio thread, which you can think of as the fast lane, that's data that needs to get through quickly, otherwise you might get audio dropouts and pops and crackles and other weird glitches. Or it can run on the message thread, and this is for slow moving traffic that doesn't necessarily need to happen instantly, things like updating the GUI for example. And it's important that you're aware of these threads and which one you're running particular bits of code on, because obviously you don't want to clog up the audio thread with GUI rendering, and you don't want to try and be doing time critical stuff on the slow message thread. Now Christoph actually wrote about this ages ago in a post on the forum under the blog category. I think it's called Scripting Best Practices. I'll post the link in the video description. You should have a read of that post anyway, it's just got some really good information in it, but it, it does cover this topic as well. So we're going to look at this problem and the solution for it through an example. We're going to make a little transposing script. So we're going to start off by adding a label to our GUI. So I'm just right clicking, add new label, and we're going to call this LBL note. And we'll make that larger. And we'll increase the font size there, put something like 60, nice and big. And we'll grab a reference to this and paste that reference into our script. Okay, we're also going to add a knob, and this is going to be our transpose knob. So I'll add a slider there. Call it can be transpose. We'll give it a range of minus 12 to plus 12. So this is semitones and the middle position can be zero and the step size is one. And we'll just change the text there to just say transpose. Okay, so there's our transpose knob. So we'll grab a reference to this knob as well. Paste that into our script and add a comment. Okay, so the idea of this script is we can play a note on the keyboard and it's going to be transposed by whatever amount of transposition we set here, minus 12 semitones up to plus 12 semitones. And the resulting note, so the original note plus the transposition, will appear in the label here. So let's do that. So we'll go to our on note callback. And in here, we're going to get the original note into a variable. Call that variable n. It's going to be message get note number and now we want to update the label so lbl note dot set text and in here we're going to put n so the original note plus k and b transpose dot get value so if I play some notes on my keyboard now we're going to see the note output to this label here. There we go, so you can see the note numbers there. Let's just add an on-screen keyboard so you can actually see which notes I'm pressing. Okay, so now you can actually see which notes I'm playing on the keyboard here and how they're displaying up there. Now we're getting this um, point 0, so we just need to round this down, so we'll just do math.round And now we don't get that decimal. Okay, now we need to actually apply the transposition. So to do that, we can write message dot set transpose amount. And then we can just put KNB transpose dot get value. And that will actually apply the transposition amount. So, so we can hear that. I'm just going to add a sine wave generator. So now when I play a note, we'll actually hear it. And I'll adjust the transpose while I play. Okay, so we can hear the transposer works. So by default, the MIDI callbacks on note on, on note off, on controller, and the time callback on timer will all be running in the fast lane. They're all on the audio thread. They're zooming away, trying to get the data processed as quickly as possible so you get the best 
audio output without glitches and dropouts and pops and clicks and all that. The other callbacks, things like mouse callbacks, on init, on control callbacks, they're running on the message thread by default, and they'll always run on the message thread, that can't be changed. So what we're doing here, we're updating the label on the GUI in the on note on callback. So that means we're doing this GUI update in the fast lane, we're on the audio thread, and we're blocking that audio thread by doing this slow action. Now, as we've seen, it doesn't cause any problems in this particular instance, but it's not a good idea to be doing it. On the other hand, the message.send set transpose amount, that does need to be on the audio thread. That's a, something that needs to be done instantly in real time as fast as possible, because we need to update that note as soon as you hit the key. We don't want to do it 10 milliseconds later. We don't want any lag. So this needs to be real time. This needs to be not real time. This needs to be in the slow lane. So how can we separate these two? So what we need to do in our UI script is we need to say, run everything in the slow lane, put it all on the message thread. We're going to do all the slow stuff in this script because this is our GUI script. It doesn't need to be fast. This is just for the interface. So the way we do that is we go to our on init callback and we write synth dot defer callbacks. And then we say true in here. And now when I hit F5, this is going to tell Highs to run all of the callbacks, including the ones that were previously running on the audio thread. We're going to run them all in the slow lane now, they're all on the message thread. So things like this, this set transpose amount, won't work anymore in this script. So if I play a key, you see we get an error now. Call of set transpose amount outside of MIDI event callback. So this is telling us that we can't do this real time action in a non real time thread but it's great for updating our GUI because that's a slow action and now we're doing it on a slow thread, so that's perfect. But now we need to handle this. So what we've got to do is separate this into a separate script that we're going to have real time. So we're going to click on our little pencil icon, MIDI processors, add a new script processor, and this is going to be our transpose script. And this second script, our transpose script, is not going to have the synth defer callbacks line because we don't need that. But we're going to have to have some communication between the two scripts so that the knob on our UI can affect how the transposer works. So that's going to be the next little task to do. So first of all, in our on note callback in our UI script, let's just delete this transpose thing because we know we can't use that here. We'll hit F5. Now I want to play some notes. We won't see any more errors. That's working as before, except no transposition is taking place. So in our new little script, our transposer script, which is real time, the first thing we're going to do is in on init, we're going to add a knob to the UI. When you're working in secondary scripts that aren't your main interface script, you're going to be adding controls to the UI through scripting. You can do it through the interface designer, but it's generally better to do it through scripting because then you can reuse this secondary module in other projects and the UI is already there in the script. It will, add, it will create the UI when you add this script to your project. So it's just a good way of doing it. So we're going to add a control, can be transpose, can be transpose, and that's going to be equal to content.addknob and for the name, don't bother giving it the KNB prefix. Just put the name of the control and capitalize it. And this way we can refer to it from our other script. We can just say set transpose instead of saying set KNB transpose. It's just a bit of a nicer way to work. And we need to set the range of this knob. So do dot set range. And it's going to go from minus 12 to plus 12 with a step size of one, and I'll hit F5, and there is our little transpose knob here. Now in our on note callback, we can write message dot set transpose amount, and then put KNB transpose dot get value. So that's just pulling the value from the knob. And even though the knob is just called transpose, our variable here is called KNB transpose. So that's why I put KNB transpose here. So I'll Click Compile, and now if I play a note and move this knob, we'll hear the transposition. 
But of course, this isn't on our interface, so let's just bring those both up. So if I move this knob here, we're not going to see anything update on our interface. And if I move the knob on our interface, we'll see it update, but we won't hear any change. So now we've got to link these two together. But the great thing is, this is running real time. This transpose script is running real time. It's going to be fast. We're not going to get any dropouts. And our UI script is running on the message thread. It's running slow. It's not blocking up the fast lane. So it can take its time and we don't have to worry about any issues. So now the only thing to do is get these two scripts talking to each other. And there are a couple of ways we can do that. The first and probably the easiest way, we can click K and B transpose up here. So we're selecting the knob. And then in the processor ID box, we can select our secondary script transposer. And in the parameter ID box, we can select our knob, which we call transpose. We didn't call it KMB transpose for this reason, because it's better to present it this way. We can just select transpose. And now those two knobs are linked. So here's our transpose script, and here's the UI. So now if I move the knob on the UI, we should see the change here and hear it. If you need your GUI knob to do more than one thing, then using processor ID and parameter ID won't work. We need to use a custom callback. So I'll show you how to do it with the custom callback as well. So I'm just going to clear this out so it's no longer linked through processor and parameter ID. We're going to right click. We're going to select create custom callback definition. We'll paste that in. So now we've got a callback for our knob control and we need to get a reference to our transpose a script. So just right click here and select create generic script reference and we'll paste that in. And now in our callback, we can write transposer. So that's just this variable here, our transposer script dot set attribute transposer. And then the name of the control which we've called transpose. So we can just say dot transpose. So this is very similar to how you do it for any of the built-in modules. Like if you were setting an envelope, you might do like envelope dot attack. So in our case, it's transpose er with an R dot transpose. And then we set the value like that. So we'll hit F5. And again, these two things should now be linked. But this is where we're doing it through scripting. So that's it. So we've separated out the MIDI processing logic, which needs to be in the fast lane, from the GUI logic, which can run in the slow lane. I recommend that you always put synth .defer callbacks true at the top of your main interface script. There is no reason to do real-time MIDI processing in your UI script. It should always be done in a separate script. And by putting this at the top of your interface script, Highs will let you know if there's any issues with the stuff you're trying to do in the MIDI callbacks. And because it will alert you to that, you can then restructure your code and separate things out. As always, I hope you found this helpful. I'll be posting the snippet I created here for my higher tier patrons so if you'd like to be able to load up this snippet yourself go and check out my patreon page there's a link in the video description if you have any questions or comments please leave them below thank you very much for watching and i'll see you next time